crowdfunding is the idea that you get a large number of people to give you small donations or pledges in order to finance your project. It's usually done through the internet, and it's something that's becoming more and more popular these days, and you're going to hear a lot more about it. Over the next eight minutes, I'm going to tell you three stories from my childhood that will illustrate five lessons or rules that we can apply to crowdfunding, and we'll look at three case studies that will show how these lessons apply. When I was seven years old, my family moved from a small farm community to a brand new suburb outside of Toronto. It's this kind of suburb where there was dirt out front, the lawns hadn't been planted yet, and all we had in the neighborhood were construction workers and other big box homes and no kids. And our mother had to keep us occupied. She had three rambunctious farm kids on her hands. So she decided to teach us how to bake donuts one day. Well, my older sister took it on with a flurry. She loved baking donuts. I got a little bit bored. I just wanted to go down the street to the convenience store and buy penny candies. This was a whole new thing, a convenience store just down the street from our house that I could walk to. So while my sister was baking donuts, I started thinking. And I decided to go across the street and sell my sister's donuts to those construction workers so that I could get some money to go to the convenience store to buy those candies. <laughs> well, I was a good little sister, and I shared the money with my sister. Now, on that day, I learned two valuable lessons. The first one is, make something awesome. And the second one is, sell directly to your audience. I could have gone to the convenience store to sell those donuts, who would then sell them to the construction workers. But I didn't do that. I went straight to the construction workers myself. Well, after I learned the importance of sales, I decided that I would cut my sister out of the equation so I didn't have to share the profits with her. <laughs> I made my own artwork in about 20 seconds. And I ran down the street, and I knocked on my neighbor's doors. And I said, 50 cents, please. It didn't go over that well. My mom got a phone call from one of the neighbors, and the neighbor said, your daughter's asking for charity. Is your family doing OK? To which my mom had to sit me down and explain, you shouldn't go door to door asking for money, because people will think you're asking for charity, and it makes them feel bad. Now, mom realized fairly quickly that she had a smart, young, ambitious girl in her hands, so she set me up with a paper route. I had to go door to door delivering papers. It should have taken about 15 minutes but it took me three hours. I wandered around doing everything but delivering newspapers. So again, one of the neighbors called my mother and complained. So mom sat me down and she said, you've got to follow through. Now, I finally learned that lesson. I started delivering them within about an hour. And at Christmas time, I had to go door to door asking for the money to pay for the route. Well, some of those neighbors gave me tips. They gave me $5 in tips. That's 500 penny candies to a seven-year-old kid. This was gold. And I learned the important lesson that they might just give you tips if you do a really good job and you follow through. Now, how does this apply to crowdfunding? It's fairly simple. There are multiple websites that you can use for crowdfunding, and I don't have time to get into them here, but there's tons of them out there. We're going to look at three different case studies. The first one is the TikTok Luna Watch. What this is, this is a designer named Scott Wilson in Chicago, and he decided to make a watch band that would hold the iPod Nano. If you put your money into that pot, you would be able to get the watch strap. Not the iPod Nano, just the strap. But it was a really cool strap, and people loved it. And they signed up, and they gave pledges to get their watch straps before anyone else. He only needed $15,000. He got 942,578. So did he make something awesome? Absolutely. Did he sell it directly to his audience? He could have gone to stores. He could have gone to distributors. He could have said, please, let me make this watch. But he didn't. He went straight to his audience through the internet. He didn't ask for charity. He didn't say, I'm a poor, struggling designer. Please give me your money. He said, look, I got something awesome. Buy it. He followed through, absolutely. You can see up there it says updates 42. So that's him communicating to his audience, letting them know what's happening in the process. You can see there's 13,512 people that backed that. The cool thing here is he got tips in a really big way. <laughs> I think almost a million dollars is a pretty good tip. The next story that I'm going to tell you is about Tall Tale Books, which is a local community bookstore here in Victoria, BC. It's a mom and pop children's bookstore, and they were struggling with cash flow. They didn't know that they were about to start crowdfunding, but they absolutely did crowdfund the money. They went to their community, they went online, and they posted a tweet that said, 
put $10 aside every month into our PayPal account, and then come in every few months and cash in your credit and get your kids books. They needed cash flow, and they needed customers in the store. Now, I'm a single woman without any kids. I shouldn't be their audience. But I've got nieces and nephews, and I'm the world's greatest auntie. So I signed up right away. And I said, here's my 10 bucks. This is awesome. So is it awesome? I think so. Did they connect to their audience? Did they sell to their audience? Absolutely. They didn't ask for charity, and they so easily could have. They could have said, we are the poor, struggling mom and pop bookstore. Give us your money to save us. Or they could have gone to the bank to do the same thing. But they didn't. They crowdfunded it. They connected to their audience. They followed through. And the interesting thing with them for tips is it's not so much a tip in the way that it is that when you go in and you cash in your credit, you're probably going to spend just a little bit more. And I know I do when I bring my nieces and nephews in. I always end up spending just a little bit more. The last one is Locked in a Garage Band, which is a movie that I did with my sister this past summer. We crowdfunded the money last February. And those of you in Victoria that were paying attention on Twitter that day, it was a very fun day. We raised $20,000 in order to make our first feature film. We had no videos on YouTube. We had nothing to show people that we could become filmmakers. We're brand new. We only needed 20 grand. It's a movie about a high school garage band that gets locked in their garage for a day. It doesn't cost a lot of money. <laughs> we can do it for 20 grand. We can shoot it on the best camera, the red camera. But we went straight to our audience. Now, who's our audience? They're people that grew up in the 90s that remember coming of age movies like John Hughes, The Breakfast Club, and 16 Candles. There anybody who's ever played in a garage band. There's anybody who's ever loved someone in a garage band. We connected directly to our audience. We think we made something awesome. We really hope we did. Um, we're in the editing phase right now, and you know, we hope it's awesome. Um, and in terms of tips, for us, we got media coverage. We were in McLean's. We were in Yahoo News. We were in MSN, all because we crowdfunded. Because we crowdfunded, we got better actors. We got union actors that would normally get paid a heck of a lot more than we paid them. So in our case, our tips didn't so much come in financial because we just got what we needed. But they did come in the form of being able to have stronger actors. Now, how does this apply to you guys? The point here is that crowdfunding isn't hard. As long as you follow those five simple rules from my childhood, you got to make it awesome. You cannot launch until you're ready. It has to be awesome. You have to sell it directly to your audience, but you can't just sell it to the audience. You have to know who your audience is. Don't ask for charity. It makes people feel bad. It's as simple as that. Picture that little girl. You know, that, that just makes people feel bad. And get out there, follow through, and you might just get tips. Yeah.